Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Arby's and the ACC on ABC. Not a cloud in the sky here in Atlanta. Perfect day for football at Bobby Dodd Stadium. And we renew a rivalry, some clean old-fashioned hate. Georgia and Georgia Tech, after a hiatus last season, get back together again here in Atlanta. And for the number one ranked dogs, what a season it has already been. 11-0 for the first time since 1982 behind the nation's best defense. And they have been the number one team all the way through the college football playoff rankings. Well earned. Next stop, a date with Alabama in the SEC championship game. The college football playoff all still out in front of them. Bob O'Shusen here with Dan Orlovsky. Chris Budden is with us as well. And something that you said about the number one team that certainly stood out preparing for this game this week. Regardless of score, yeah. regardless of opponent, regardless of game situation, they always look the same. Yeah, their effort is indifferent of what's going on. Whether it's the first snap of the game or the last snap of the game, they're up 50 to nothing. It's really a culture that's been built in Georgia. I can say this. We've seen basically the top six, seven, eight teams in college football this year. No one as a team plays with more fanatical and maniacal effort than Georgia does. We will not have a play today that a ball carrier pulls himself up off the ground or a defensive guy has to make a tackle by himself. What Kirby Smart has built is what makes this team special, the culture of each other. Well, we'll see if the Ramblin' Wreck have a chance to pull off the upset today. We'll come back and kick it off in a moment after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. You know you have a good rivalry when the two teams can't agree on what their record is against each other. You can see, according to Georgia, they've got two less losses against Georgia Tech than the Yellow Jackets claim. That's because back during World War II, Georgia Tech utilized players from a Naval Officers Training Program posted on campus when they were short players, won a couple of the matchups, and the dogs and their fans, you know, we don't count those. We've got two less losses against you than you think. That's just part of rivalry weekend in college football in some clean old fashioned hate. It makes you hate math so much. Is that what it took for yeah. you to hate math? Yeah. Georgia won the toss, and not surprisingly, they're gonna put their defense out there first. As Jameer Gibbs will let this one bounce, and he needs to field that ball. He didn't call for a fair catch, and the ball didn't get to the end zone. So right off the bat, a bad mistake on special teams by Georgia Tech. As Gibbs thought that one would bounce in the end zone, it did not. He was forced to return it, and now Dan, against the best defense in college football, you start inside your own 10-yard line. Yeah, ball hung in the air on Gibbs, but this defense for Georgia is spectacular. Give up, 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 up about seven and a half points a game. They've only had seven touchdowns scored on them. It starts with 99, Jordan Davis. He's a mountain of a man. They got the best linebacker in college football, Nicobe Dean. Nolan Smith, his partner in crime, is fantastic. This defense hunts the football. And they'll rush four on first down. Quarterback run for about a yard for Yates. Trevon Walker made the stop, second down and nine. And I think Georgia Tech offensively has to slow itself down just a little bit today. Usually they love to play with crazy tempo. They got to get in the huddle, try to shorten this game, minimize the opportunity for mistakes. Get the ball to number one, Jameer Gibbs, as much as humanly possible. He lines up in the pistol, and he'll take the handoff. Looking for a cutback lane, spinning, pirouetting, and going down. A loss of a yard. And already, Chris Button, we see the spirit of this defense for Georgia. Yeah, Kirby Smart's biggest deal over the offseason was how do I take this team from good to great? And is the connection between these players. Every single one that I talked to this week has mentioned it. Nolan Smith told me, I actually feel like we've had more talent before. But the difference is the connection. When you know someone's why, there is a closeness there. You want to play harder because you know their why. You see it on the field, off the field, throughout the game. 
And you see the dogs want a hunt on third down and 10. A swing pass to Jordan Mason. He's got no chance to get the first down. He squeezes out to the 15 yard line, just buys some real estate for their punt group. And so now with that early special teams mistake, Dan, here's a chance for Georgia to get great field position for their first opportunity. Yeah, really the story of the season for this Georgia Bulldog football team is how great their defense does of forcing three and outs and then giving their offense short field position to try and work with that allows you to play with such confidence as a play caller their offensive coordinator Todd Monken and their quarterback Stetson Bennett the Irishman David Shanahan believed to be the first Irish native ever awarded a full scholarship to play American college football but he's one of those pro kick products Harris Jackson fields it on a hop Uses a stiff arm, turns the corner with speed down the sideline. And there is the terrific field position for the dogs to start. Let's take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Jared. Dan, break it down. Yeah, I think Georgia, be where you are right now. I know what next week is. Next week is handle your business today. You got to manhandle up front Georgia Tech's youth and then stay healthy. For Georgia Tech, I talked about it. Number one, Jameer Gibbs, he's got to have a historically great game. They got to throw everything they have at Georgia. Any trick play that they can think of or they've saved any three phase of defense or offense, special teams and defense, any phase of football. And then they got to figure out a way to get the ball from Georgia three times. I don't care if it's on special teams, change of field position, steal a possession somehow, some way. Well, one of those times with the short field would be pretty good right here as Kenny McIntosh circles in motion and takes the swing pass. And he is lassoed out of bounds at about the 25 yard line, but easily picked up 11. Trey Swilling made the stop, but it is a dog's first down. And boy, what a job Stetson Bennett has done. Really seems to now. And it's been kind of a, a process during the season for him to solidify himself as the starter, but no one seems to ask that question anymore, haven't, at least in recent weeks. Yeah, and I think he should be their starter, and I think they can win a national championship with him as their starting quarterback. He's aggressive with the football, he listens to his feet and rhythm, and then his athleticism really helps their run game, led by Zamir White and James Cook. It'll be Cook. And he is turned back at the 21 yard line, picked up about three and a half. Another tackle for Swilling. You know, we've talked, at least nationally, the conversation has been about Georgia and their defense, rightfully so. I actually was really impressed with this offensive line. I think their offensive line is strong. They play with great speed, power, athleticism. They've got phenomenal hands. I was impressed with that unit. And number one is on the field for Georgia. George Pickens lines up to the near side right for the first time this season as they are breaking him in off the torn ACL. They're going to run it instead with Zamir White. He breaks a tackle and gets into the red zone. Trey Swilling in on the stop again, but that is certainly news. We knew that they were breaking George Pickens back in. Today they take the wrapper off of Pickens and allow him to play at least part of this game against Georgia Tech. And Dan, that's a big weapon that this Georgia squad will add as they head towards Alabama next week in the playoffs. Yeah, huge, because they're probably best and most trusted receivers, number 19, Brock Bowers. He's in the slot at the bottom of your screen. He's a true freshman, so for Pickens to come back with this size would be a big deal. An early third down now for Georgia. As Bennett on the slant, in and out of the hands of Adonai Mitchell. So that's a good red zone stop for the Georgia Tech defense to begin as they give up the short field and will hold to a field goal attempt. Yeah, the ball just gets on Mitchell so quickly. He's got a slant left side of the screen, man coverage. Good throw by Stetson Bennett, literally on his face mask, and the ball just jumps on him. Maybe that Stetson Bennett just pauses for a second knowing it's man coverage, but you expect Mitchell to make that catch. Next week, that might be George Pickens on that slant. 38-yard field goal for Jack Podlesny to try and get Georgia on the board. And he sneaks it inside the left upright. And the Dogs do indeed get the first three of this rivalry game.
This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you to Allstate. Uga taking in a perfect day for football and boy, welcome back to Bobby Dodd Stadium or what might be better termed Athens West. There's a lot of red <laughs> downtown yeah. Atlanta in Georgia Tech's home stadium. Although Tech was able to get an early stop defensively and hold to a field goal and now it will come out to their 25 yard line. We've got more great games to follow, including a Saturday triple header on ABC. The 116th annual Bedlam game between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State at 7.30 Eastern here on ABC and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. And of the games we've got on the docket today, Dan, that one has big time college football playoff implications because you got a couple of teams, the Big 12, hoping if they become the champion of that league, yeah. maybe they could surprise, get some surprise losses in front of them and hop up and make that top four. Well, we know somebody in front of them is losing today with Michigan and Ohio State playing. We had Oklahoma State, man, and we know how impressive that defense is. I know Georgia's the best, but they're in that conversation. Jameer Gibbs ahead for about two, and there is Jordan Davis making the stop. You know, this Georgia defense and really focusing on Jordan Davis, he believes and they believe in the philosophy of two on me means someone is free, meaning if he takes on those two blockers, his six foot six, 340 pound frame, that means that there's somebody on their defense running free. And that's that selfless kind of philosophy as a defensive tackle that just allows your linebackers to play such good football. Eights off his back foot with the pressure coming. He's popped by Nicobe Dean. And it will be third down and eight. But Jordan Davis somewhat emblematic of this defense. And some of the great stories they've got through this team. Not everyone is a five-star. Right? You get this idea that they're all five stars. Yeah. That's a three-star recruit out of high school that was not a regular starter defensively until his senior year. But Back when their defensive line coach, Trey Scott, was at North Carolina, he spotted him. And when he came to coach for Kirby Smart, he said, you know what? Keep an eye on this kid. Like, I, I, he didn't really have to sell him too much, yeah. but it turned out to be a very nice move to bring Jordan Davis in. The best compliment I could give him is he's a freakazoid athlete and his effort is better. Third down and long. Dragging across the middle, Dylan Leonard, the tight end, but he is brought down again with no chance to get anywhere near the first down as a walk-on. Dan. Dan Jackson on the stop for the Bulldogs. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the meats, and in part by Mazda. The last team to go 12 and 0 for Georgia was Vince Dooley and Herschel's 80 championship team. This is a resume that has been built for the dogs all season long with four wins against ranked opponents, two against the top 10, and at least in the regular season trying to go 12-0 for the first time. And they start at their own 20-yard line. Bob Oshuz and Dan Orlovsky, Chris Button, here in Atlanta. Play action for Stetson Bennett. 
Looks downfield. Sidearms went over the middle. And a sliding catch is made out to about the 36-yard line by Kiaris Jackson. Yeah, and see, that's the example of following the rules of the play. Watch. Benson really wants to take a shot downfield to his left. It's not there. Get to the second read. Know where your option is with Jackson on that crossing route. Well done. A hitch to the near side to Adane Mitchell. He's out to the 44, maybe the 45-yard line, eight and a half on first down. I like that right there. He saw that that corner blitz was going to come. It was a called run. He realized Mitchell sees it the same way. He extends himself to the sideline. It's an easy extension, really, of the run game with that added pressure from Georgia Tech's defense. Fun being a play caller on second down and one. Let's see what Georgia dials up here. A keeper for Bennett. Cuts back, pays the price, but picks up the first down. Keon White made the stop. Yeah, but that's kind of how he helps their run game a little bit. You do that zone read. I know it's not a huge chunk, but this forces defense to play just a little bit more honest. Benson's able to carry it, and then it's now a, a first down conversion for their football team. Next time, that defense might pay a little bit more attention to the quarterback, and you hand it off to the tailback for a chunk run. Might be getting pressure off the bottom of the screen, slot receiver. A bullet over the middle, and they beat the pressure. To about the 40-yard line goes Brock Bowers. The tight end was a 35th catch on the season. The true freshman picks up 14 and a first down. A great job by the offensive line picking it up in pressure. You see the zone spacing right there for Bowers. Such an impressive freshman. You know, great size. He's got really good ball skills. He does it all at a really sped up pace. They talked about his work ethic since the moment he's come in here. Reminds me so much of George Kittle, the tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. Kind of can do everything at that spot. It's a pretty flattering comparison for a true freshman. Here's Cook. He bobs and weaves for four. I just think Bowers is an impressive player. Think about it as a true freshman to come in really from the West Coast, and then you go have 34 catches, 550 yards. You are a Mackey semifinalist. I actually thought there was credence for him to be a finalist at the position, but just an incredibly intelligent player, physically tough, and he's going to be a star in this program for many years. Quarterback run, Stetson Bennett. Using his legs again for another Georgia first half. It's a nice job, you kind of playing that spread out offensive formation. Motion to back out, that takes a defender out of the box. Now it's five on five. Your center Van Pran can go up and lead up on a linebacker. There's seven, eight yards before Stetson Bennett was even touched by the defense. Just enough, Bob, six and a half yards of carry. Just enough as a runner to keep the defense a little honest. James Cook breaking a couple tackles and works hard for about James three, Cook maybe three and a half. Well, it was something that when you were breaking down tape this week and talking about Stetson Bennett that I heard you say yeah. over and over again, don't hurt your football team. Yeah. Right? Just make good decisions, whether it's with your legs, don't force one, because you know what kind of a defense you have. Yeah. Right? For this team, they score 17 points against almost anyone they play. That's probably going to be good enough. Yeah, and that's where the athleticism comes into play. Is you can treat your legs as a quarterback as another step in the progression. So you don't have to make a throw, try to fit something. Thing, you can trust your legs to go and get four or five yards as a runner. Lobbing one to the end zone and dropping right down the chimney is Stetson Bennett to Jermaine Burton for the touchdown. Watch the safeties. They split their double in the slot in the tight end. You get your receiver Burton one-on-one. -on -one. I love the touch. 
from Stetson Bennett. He realizes kind of an all-out blitz situation coverage-wise. There's the one-on-one, -on -one, a beautiful touch throw over the top of the defense. Five completions for Stetson Bennett to five different receivers. Caps it with the fourth touchdown reception this season for Trevane Burton. Bennett, his 18th touchdown pass. Yeah, great job. Betson realizes double coverage on the outside. Let me take my receiver down the middle. Beautiful touch throw. Touchdown Bulldogs. Welcome back to Atlanta. 10-0 lead for Georgia. The number one team looking very much like it early on. As Stetson Bennett found Jermaine Burton a moment ago for the first touchdown of the game. And this will be another touchback as Jameer Gibbs watches it sail through the back of the end zone. Our fan, first chance to check in with Kevin Nagandi. Although Michigan has the ball back, and Dan, maybe this is finally the year for Jim Harbaugh where he gets that signature win. Yeah, we'll I see. think their, their edge rushers are so great. Their offensive line pounds the football. I think if they play their style, they can do it. That's the best first down play we've Jordan seen from Georgia Tech carrier. so far. As Jordan Mason picks up I'm six and at least, Jim, at least gives them second and maybe third and manageable. Yeah, I, I think that's the challenge for Georgia Tech today is how are they going to be able to be kind of a dual threat offense? Can they run the ball somewhat okay, but then throw the ball at least with some form of success against this defense? Because no one's really done that against this Georgia defense this year, been able to do both. And that's the challenge, challenge for Jeff Collins' unit. Can they run it? decently but also hit some shots downfield in their pass game. That's Jameer Gibbs in motion. And a nice little pump fake that at least froze the defense. And Jordan Yates looked like he might get it to Jameer Gibbs. That allows him to dive ahead for a first down. I'm a Jordan Yates fan. Just a creative play. They're really trying to kick that to Gibbs out there. And he just reacts as a playmaker and keeps it himself. That's kind of who he is. A playmaker, an energetic style of quarterback. His athleticism is better than his ability to throw the football, but uh, loved by his teammates, and he's really taking advantage of the opportunity with Jeff Sims, their other quarterback, being able to play in so many games this year. Gibbs in motion again. This time circles behind and takes the swing pass. And he is gonna lose real estate. And Jackson, first there for the Dogs. That's a loss of about five. Now well, close to four. Just people running to the football. Jackson was really shot out of a cannon there. Kind of read that play before it ever started to develop. And then three or four more Georgia Bulldogs on defense running to it. I, I, I don't mind that play. That's the second time we've seen it. You better have two or three things coming off of that action if you're Georgia Tech offensively. Because if you think you're going to do that against Kirby Smart's defense repetitively with success, you're kidding yourself. Fifteen, and if you're Georgia defensively, you think really confidently, okay, we can rush our four, we can play with our two safeties in coverage. This is a young offensive line for Georgia Tech. Let's make this quarterback operate. Let's make him get through progressions while dealing with four-man rush. Here comes a blitz. One-on-one -on -one down the sideline, back shoulder. 
And P.J. Harris could not reach back to make the catch. So one first down on this possession, the first of the game yeah. for Georgia Tech, but it still results in a punt. Yeah, when you're throwing that back shoulder fade, I'd say Gates just a little more touch on this football. That's such a difficult adjustment when the ball is kind of thrown on that line right there for your receiver. You really want just a little bit of touch on that ball. It just gives him a fraction, a second more to make that adjustment with his body to try and make that catch. gets it away but boy it is a terrific punt McConkey with a fair catch back inside his own 15 at the 13 yard line a 56 yard punt no return we'll back, we will be back in 10 seconds now look from Ram Trucks Ram Trucks built to serve We talk about Georgia's defense and all the things they can set up, but that combination of Zamir White and James Cook at running back set this up for Stetson Bennett off play action, and he's already got a deep touchdown pass to go along with two other completions. Yeah, this offense is a really good unit complementary style-wise. You know, their run game and their offensive line is so good. You get so many one-on-ones on the outside, and Betson operates it really well. They'll run it here with Zamir White. He found a crease for seven. White stays in the game, second down and three. That's and sees something, wants to change something at the line of scrimmage, the communication. Everybody's got to be on the same page. They'll give it to Zeus White again. And he's got a first down. It's a young man that tore two ACLs in high school and was still the number one recruit in all of high school football. And he's become a heck of a college running back. Yeah, you bring your tight end across the line of scrimmage. He really sits block. That end man on the line, what that does is it allows better angles for your offensive line. And then you talked about Zamira White, just a powerful back. He's really their first and second down type of back. He's heart and soul of this offense because of the things he's been through on his journey. Play action for Bennett. He'll lob one to the sideline. Stride, he drops it in to Marcus Rosamie Jackson for a big play and a first down. He's got 30. Yeah, it's a play action pass, kind of one of those levels. You got a post from the right, and then here comes Rosamie Jackson crossing the field. See how he peeks to his right real quickly there? Bennett to just see that flat defender go that way opens up that window in the zone. They fake the screen and now check it down to Zeus White. He's got plenty of room out in front untouched before he picks up a first down. This is where tempo does factor for, you know, offenses. You just did a 30-plus yard gain in the play-action pass. You get to the line of scrimmage, you run a four-by-one formation. Defense falls out underneath, almost in a panic mode. You kick it out to your back, easy throw and catch for 15. And that will take us to the end of a first quarter that was dominated by Georgia, as Tech has yet to cross the 50-yard line. Here's a look at the National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. And will that trophy make its way back to Athens at some point mm. and end a better than four decade drought for the dogs? They've had chances in the past, but this might be the best chance with this defense. And this season, certainly the litmus test begins next week against Alabama in the SEC Championship game. You would think. <laughs> Got to get there first. Though. That's right. I Be guess I'm giving Alabama are, too much credit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Kenny McIntosh, the lone setback. Play action for Bennett. And it looks like he's going to go down. The pass rush gets home. He got back near the line of scrimmage. 
Jordan Dominic brings him down, but it's a loss of a couple. It will be second down and 12. Let's go down to Chris. Yeah, Bob, you mentioned Zamir White's two ACL injuries, and that is just a portion of his long medical journey. He was born with a cleft palate and a cleft lip. At one point, he was losing body weight. He went to the hospital. Doctors told his mom he would only have two weeks to live. He then had surgery to repair a hernia, leaking kidneys. On his downtime, you find him inside Children's Hospital visiting kids because he says, that's where I know I can help. I know what it's like to feel their position. That is as good as it gets. Lyman up the ladder to make the catch is Darnell Washington. And it's a first down for Georgia down to the 11-yard line. Awesome story on Samir White and just his journey. I love when players take difficulty and turn it into positivity for them and then they it, you know it's their journey there is no testimony unless you're tested and him using that platform of who he is to help you know families and kids that are going through some type type of difficulty similar to what he did is awesome screen out to the edge to Lad McConkey he's looking for the pylon and he is there touchdown by Brock Bowers. Look at him fight for the outside. McConkie get in. Yeah, that looks like he's in with that ball in the right hand, kicking that front pylon. See the fight by the freshman tight end? I think he's in. Called a touchdown on the field. Nine completions now for Stetson Bennett to nine different receivers. Now you have to see where the football is as well. Looks like it's over the pylon. The pylon rule in college football is different than the NFL. The NFL, it's just a marker. But in college football, it's actually part of the sideline. So when his toe hits the pylon, he's out of bounds. Okay. If he's got a foot in, but he's making contact with the pylon, it's not when his foot lands out of bounds. He's out of bounds the moment he touches the pylon. Where do we think the football is? It certainly looks like it's over the pylon yeah. when his foot touches. Yeah, it looks like there's a little reach from there. Watch, as his right foot's going to clip that pylon, where's that ball? If that ball is inside that pylon, it's a touchdown, right? Or even over it. Over it is still a touchdown. I think it's I, a I don't touchdown. know how you wouldn't yeah. call it a touchdown. Yeah, I agree. Now, fun talking to Todd Munkin about Lad McConkey yesterday. So when Lad McConkey shows up, he looks like the kid that delivers your paper. And he does not look like an SEC football player, at least when you first lay eyes on him. But such a hard worker. Yeah. And a guy that we all thought might be a Tennessee commit. His late grandfather played at Tennessee, and he grew up going to games After at Neyland review, Stadium, but Tennessee never stands. offered. Well, he's, their, he's their only receiver. And it is indeed a touchdown. His only FBS offers were Vandy and Army in Coastal Carolina until Georgia saw something in Ladd McConkey and made him a dog. Yeah, and he's their only guy, receiver-wise, that has a receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown this season. He's like one of those football players you just make that concerted effort to get the ball to. I was impressed by Stetson Bennett on that drive. The throw to McConnell, the throw to Washington, very impressive. A three-score lead for Georgia. As number one, looking to put an exclamation point on a perfect regular season. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Burrito guy or taco guy at Taco Bell? Both. You can only get one. You can't say both. Both. All right. <laughs> but you? Uh, I'm a big burrito guy. I'm a hard shell taco guy, big burrito. Love the nachos. Gotta get some chicken on the nachos. 
It'll come out to the 25-yard line for Georgia Tech. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, let, let's go back to this because this is selflessness by their true freshman, Brock Bowers. He's in the slot. Now, his block is huge. He has to chase leverage, meaning you got to get to the outside of that defender on his left shoulder. Now, McConkie's just going to go one step and kick that ball to the flat, but the block by Bowers is huge. See how he outside releases, chase leverage, chase leverage. Now, McConkie, read it, and then you got to go get on the perimeter and go find that front pylon. But that was perfect blocking leverage by Bowers and an awesome job by McConkie of getting outside of that block and then finding that front pylon for the Bulldog offense. 17 on the board for Georgia. Only one first down so far for Georgia Tech. They go to work again. And here's Jordan Yates being chased. Nowhere to go. Flag down as he is sacked back to the 11-yard line. Quay Walker, Nakobe Dean both got through. Holding, offense number 72, penalties decline, second down. Now the hold didn't help, but it's a sack for Georgia. Let's go down to Chris. Hey, you guys talking about Lat McConkie and the offer from Georgia. It came on a special date, January 20th. That date is significant. It's also the same date that he wears on his towel. Four years to the day that his grandfather, Vic, passed away. He was holding out, hoping to get an offer from Tennessee because that's where he grew up watching the game with his grandpa. But he said, the, the significance of that day, I felt like that was my grandfather saying, make your own journey. Go mm. to Georgia. Be good. Make your own path. Be great because that's what yeah. this team is. Yeah. Mason into the secondary. Gets back the sack yardage and then some. Quay Walker brings him down, but that's a 15-yard gain and at least a chance for Georgia Tech. Third down and eight. Now watch the receiver from the left, Malachi Carter, come in, get on that safety, and that allows Mason to really get to that second level of the defense. You motion, you get a hat on a hat in your run game, but Carter coming down and digging out that secondary player was big. These third downs for Georgia Tech's offense has been dealing with the pressure, the rush of Georgia's defense. you got to find a way to get the ball kicked to the perimeter to your receivers. Yellow Jackets are 0 for 3 on third down so far. Low snap, handled by Yates, steps up in the pocket. He's going to try and run for it. Can't get outside. Darian Kendrick, the Clemson transfer, was waiting for him out on the edge. Yeah, you got coverage, but just watch the white fly to the football. The rush is there. Kendrick's, but look at everybody flying to the football. Kendrick is there. Walker's coming. Dean's waiting. See how he sheds that offensive line, and then three, four, five Bulldogs running towards the football. The reason why this defense is so good, pool there as well, is because everybody chases the ball. No one takes a break mid-play. William Poole actually made that stop. And a wobbly punt. McConkey, fair catch, lets it bounce. Takes a sideways Georgia Tech roll. Out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. 48-yard punt. And a 17-0 lead for Georgia. They'll put their offense back on the field. College football presented by Arby's on ABC is brought to you by Popeye's New Nuggets. They come in peace, a peace. Kirby Smart has accomplished plenty. Will they win a national championship this year? If they do, because of this defense. Yeah, it's changing the picture. You've got Davis and Wyatt wrapping. Walker coming from the outside, anticipating that quarterback draw. First snap of the game. Now let's change it on second down. Look at all the bodies that are going to be in the frame. This is relentless, maniacal, fanatical effort to the football. Now we'll bring the cross dog in the middle with our linebackers, Dean and Tyndall, and then we'll drop Nolan Smith out. We'll drop Walker out. And there's nobody for the quarterback to throw the football to. The pass rush gets home. So it's that constantly never giving the offense the same look twice. Those guys being crisp on their stunts and their blitzes. And it all play action. Fires one. Incomplete. Donna Mitchell, the intended receiver. So it will be second down and 10. And the 
Dogs on their opening drive stalled in the red zone and kicked a field goal, but a couple of touchdowns after that. Yeah, a little bit of the story of this offense so far this year. Really efficient. You know, the quarterback's gone to the right place with the football consistently. The offensive line has done a nice job creating some holes for these backs. They haven't had to be in many third down situations. They've just controlled the football in a very methodical and deliberate way. Three-man rush on second and ten. There's the slant to Brock Bowers. Look at the tight end go! An extra gear for the freshman. Touchdown! Wow. touchdown record for a Georgia tight end and that catch and run breaks the yardage record of Orson Charles back in 2011 so he's already got the best single season numbers that a tight end's ever had at Georgia only I told you he didn't stink man he's pretty good you saw it there just the intelligence as a route runner the speed after that catch was so impressive this is route running. Widen on the defender. You got the shallow cross on the inside to hold. Let's watch you widen that corner. This is beautiful route running from a true freshman. Now when you get to the top, snap your head, pluck that football. Let's see some home run speed from the true freshman from Cali. 24 nothing. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Arby's as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Keep playing like this. If you're Georgia, you will be driving to that Dr. Pepper championship trophy as they will be right back here in Atlanta for the SEC title game. And then we will see what the playoff holds. Almost certainly we will see Georgia. As a member of the playoff, let's go back to the touchdown. I told you it's George Kittle, like talent-wise, and this is his route. So you get Washington shallow cross. That's going to take away the inside linebacker. Now, Bowers, this is called F-post. You want to widen the defensive back. You've created a little bit of a bigger window in that zone, taking that backer out of there. Ball out on time. Now, this is special, folks. The ability to split four or five guys against that defense and run away from them. That is a traditional West Coast passing game option where you allow that guy's route running ability and patience. You get on the defender's toes, then snap across their face, catch and run. Beautiful design, but such great execution by the true freshman. And off to Dante Smith on first down. He cuts it back and spins for about seven and a half, eight yards, close to nine by the time Dan Jackson finally brings him down. It's almost like those guys in the secondary yeah. for Georgia Tech uh, took the tight end angle, yep. and all of a sudden the tight end became wide receiver speed. He's like, who's that guy? Yeah, you can almost see the cartoon bubbles coming out of their head like, oh, no. Just imagine what the freshmen <laughs> or the, the seniors in high school in California right. thought last year. This guy does not run like a tight end. Yeah. I am in a bad spot here. And it was a vapor trail to the end zone. And a 24-0 lead is still Georgia Tech's just trying to cross the 50 for the first time on offense. They'll run it again with Smith. He's got a first down. See, this is where I would like to see Georgia Tech offensively. Let's, let's play with tempo on first down. Let's get to a line of scrimmage and see if we can quick snap something and take a shot. You are not going to methodically drive the football down the field against this Georgia defense. It's 24-0. Let's be ultra aggressive. You know, I'd love in that moment to play with tempo. Let's see if we can hurry to the line of scrimmage. Maybe you get 12 on field defensively. Something where you can try and steal something from this defense. Shift by that defensive line changes all the rules for the offense. Mason, maybe a half yard. Well, if you added up all of the points this defense has surrendered yeah. and compared that 
with the number of touchdowns they've allowed and even throw in their special teams touchdowns. If their offense never scored, they'd probably be about a 500 team. Yeah, and part of it is that movement by that defensive line. You see how that late shift happens in Waldfauer? It changes the rules, the angles, the steps of the offensive line. And just that late shift by the defensive line allows Waldfauer to kind of win on that angle. There's defensive coordinator Dan Lanning. Looks a little like Josh du Duham. Dumal, Dumal, the actor, beautiful, beautiful. Um, but this defense is, is as advertised. Here's Mason. Pushes the pile. On second down and 10 for eight, makes it third down and two. Well, again, they have allowed Jeez. seven touchdowns this season. They have scored five non-offensive touchdowns, three by their defense, and a couple on special teams. They've got two safeties as well. They almost break even yeah. in terms of the number of points they've allowed and the number of points their defense and special teams have scored. I mean, they've given up seven points in the second quarter this season. Only 83 for the year, but seven in the second quarter. I think, you know, we've talked about the effort. I also believe that they're the best coached defense in America. Kirby Smart and their defensive coordinator, Dan Landon, are exhausted after games because they're so in the moment. That's another first down though for Georgia Tech. This is the deepest they've moved up the field so far today as they are nearly to midfield. And they've got a couple of first downs on this drive. Now they're bringing six or seven different defensive people onto the field. So you're talking about a defense that just had Guys play, what, four plays of this drive, and now you've got a whole new unit in that's fresh off the sideline and some rest. And so that's why these guys, you know, this culture of that fanatical, maniacal effort that these Bulldogs play with, that's why they can do it is because they've got so many different bodies coming in the game. You got to take your shot if you're Georgia Tech at some point. Gates to throw. They'll set up a screen. Well done, Jordan Mason. Blockers out in front. Weaves his way for another first down. This is the ideal play call. Pressure from the left. You call the screen into the blitz. That means less numbers in that defensive secondary. That's a good play call by Dave Pumpnod, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, just kind of timing that pressure. Right place, right time for this Yellow Jacket offense. They're staying in the huddle really till you know, 15, 20 seconds left on the play clock. Just trying to wind it down as much as they can. Part of that is just trying to not allow Georgia to see what the picture of your offense is. Bad throw from Yates, pulled the string to Malachi Carter. It'll be second down and 10. That's, it sounds silly. It's a tough throw for quarterbacks, right? Because you've got a corner that is blitzing right in between you and your receiver, Malachi Carter. So it's almost like throwing a screen pass. You really got to get kind of up on your toes to make that throw and navigate that corner. Sometimes you drop your arm down, sidearm it. For righties, it's easier to make that throw to the right than it is making that throw to the left. That blitzing corner, Ringo, kind of in between the quarterback and receiver. Smith brought down at the 37 yard line after a gain of four. So it'll be another third down on this march for Georgia Tech as Lewis Seen came up to make the stop. Yeah, and you're really thinking four down territory right now. This, right, first time you've crossed the 50, it's third and six. Your kicker's not here. So if you're Georgia Tech offensively and, and for Jordan Yates, you're thinking I've got two downs for this. Anticipate man coverage. Ball's got to come out quickly. You got to be thinking some form of a pick, a rub, or a mesh. And they go again, not breaking this huddle till very late in the play clock. Jordan Mason to the right of Yates in the shotgun on third down. And they will let Mason run for it. And I think he's got it. They're brought down right at the line to gain. The official on the far side seemed to step past the line to gain, then took a half step back. See where they mark the football. It looks like it's going to be good enough for a first down. Caught Georgia again in another pressure. Ran away from that pressure. Shut down those stem stick slanting defensive line and got outside of it. 
Hawks have impressive drive right now. I mentioned how difficult it is to methodically go down the field against this defense. And for the first part of this drive, that's exactly what the Yellow Jacket offense is doing. Gates gives one to Mason. This time he is corralled behind the line of scrimmage by Devontae Wyatt. Is that D-line movement, right, Bob? Kind of showed it a couple plays ago. That late stem, you want to hold your huddle, fine. We'll stem at the very last minute. Now watch why he goes from outside to inside, right at that snap, and basically untouched by the right guard for Georgia Tech, Ryan Johnson. That Just that late stem, that late movement is so difficult for offensive lines to deal with. That's how you counter some of the unique tempo that Georgia Tech offensively is throwing your way. And again, nowhere to go again. It'll be third down and 15. He lost another couple. Jalen Carter makes the stop. Awesome job by Carter. Watch the swim move. He's going to step down. The right arm comes over the top. You think that's athletic? How about the hands of the big fellas? Carter, the sophomore from Florida, just really done a good job of creating quarterback pressure this year. But there you see the violence of the hands in that swim move. Check and see if Jameer Gibbs is shaken up as well because he has not been on the field in quite some time for Georgia Tech. So their most dynamic offensive weapon not factoring in. And of course, Jordan Yates is the backup quarterback to Jeff Sims. He'll sprint out to the right on third down and long. Being pursued. Slingshots one to the sideline. That's incomplete. Darian Kendrick all over Kalani Norris. So now you go for this on fourth down and a mile, almost compelled to try the field goal just to get points on the board. Although the field goal unit was trotting out there for a moment, now they're going to punt instead of trying a long field goal by Gavin Stewart. Stewart was about seven or eight yards out of the field looking over, saying, should we try this to get some points on the board? And instead, they'll try and punt it down inside the 10-yard line. My thing would be on third and 15, why are you going to do a sprint out and try and get an eight-yard completion? If you're planning on punting, Throw a go ball. See if you can make it play or get past interference. Worst case, it gets intercepted. It's going to be same as a kind of coffin corner punt. Well, it looks like they may save this down to the one yard line. The officials now will say that the ball broke the plane and that they could not save it in the field of play. And this will be a touchback. Tobias Oliver. Right on the goal line, trying to keep it out of the end zone, and could not. And the rivalry games are back. That's what's great about post-COVID, because yeah. this is a rivalry game, of course, when everyone played nothing but conference schedules last season. If you had a rivalry game outside of a conference matchup, you missed it. So we didn't get Georgia, Georgia Tech, or Florida State, Florida games like that last season. Plenty of time on the clock for the dogs before halftime. As they will start at their own 20-yard line with a run to James Cook. Stetson Dennett has done such a nice job just quarterbacking this offense. Everyone, you know, hates on the phrase game manager, but look at when you just traditionally rush him, he picks you apart. Zone coverage, somebody's going to be open or man run away. When he's dealt with some pressure, not as much success in Georgia Tech's gotten home against them. They're going to have to dial up that pressure to try to find a stop here in this series. Here's a run with Zamir White. Met at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Dominic in on the stop for Georgia Tech. Need a couple. It'll be third down and four. You know, the 
these third down situations, Georgia Tech, this is the moment when they've decided we're going to play man-to-man -man coverage and we're going to come after the quarterback. This is where Stetson Bennett can do such a nice job of finding his options. Look, they bring Bowers to the bottom of the screen. That tells him man or zone. Looks like it's, you're going to get zone coverage from this Georgia Tech defense. Tipped ball at the line. Like Quez Jackson, coming on a blitz that deflected the pass, so there is a stop for Georgia Tech. And he's going to get a quick out route. Watch the right side of the screen. It's going to be wide open. Jackson realizes, again, I'm not going to get there. They're just trying to get that spot route to Burton, and he gets the left hand down. Nice job by the Georgia Tech defense. Man, we had Georgia Tech earlier in the season against Clemson tight game one of the things that we walked away from saying was goodness gracious they play hard and I know the wins have not come this year so many close losses but no one can question the effort of this football team first punt of the day for Jake Camarda Zende Ray will let it bounce that's a short one up into the wind and it takes a good hop back towards midfield only a 32 yard punt for the benefit of Georgia Tech. Kick off your week 12 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow with the countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. Then our Monday night football matchup has the Seahawks taking on the Washington football team. 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6 Eastern. Two teams that probably thought they would be higher up in the standings at this point of the season, Seahawks and Washington. Well, Washington playing without their starter for most of the year, although I think Taylor Heineke's a nice player. Russell having a finger injury. Uh, Georgia Tech, if you got a trick play, you got to call it here. Like, you, you've got to figure out some creativity trick play-wise. He'll hand it instead to Jordan Mason. And he'll pick up about three. Mason, the ball carrier. Really good job by that Georgia defensive. Just that's that complimentary. You know, Nolan Smith holds the point, seam fills, and then you've got Poole there as the unblocked guy. Everyone kind of doing their job to make sure the defense makes the tackle, not necessarily me myself. Jordan Yates pumps once under pressure, heaves it to the sideline and throws it away. Barely avoids the sack with Nolan Smith grabbing him around the ankles. Now remember, Jordan Yates is out there because of the injury to Jeff Smith from a couple of weeks ago. Watch Nolan Smith on the right side. The inside, he wants to go make that throw. Scene drops underneath, and again, that just allows that fraction of a second more for Nolan Smith to go chase. He, I'll continue to say, it's all tied together for this defense. Jeff Sims out the last two weeks. Yeah. Hurt his right foot against Miami. He also had an arm or shoulder injury in the opener. So this is the sixth start this season for Jordan Yates. And Jordan Mason on third down picks up only a couple. You'd think now that Georgia would call a timeout. It looks like they will. So with 53 seconds to go in the half. The dogs will get the football back one more time as we take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings. Brought to you by Capital One. Well, Georgia, where they deserve to be, at number one, but Alabama lurking. Ohio State and Michigan in a close one right now. And Bedlam could factor into this mix as well. That's a big one later on tonight. Yeah, I'm excited to watch that Oklahoma State defense against Oklahoma's offense and Caleb Williams and the kind of explosiveness that he brings. Can their defense be enough? Can their offense kind of control the football as well? They've become such a run-centric football team. If Michigan's defense can continue to hold up against Ohio State's dynamic weapons on the outside, that's impressive, man. If Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, they get their business done. Alabama plays Georgia close yeah. in the SEC championship and game. And the committee says those three teams belong. Is there a team behind Cincinnati right now that can leapfrog? No. Can no, I don't. I don't think it's likely. I think Cincinnati. If that happens, Cincinnati is in. What happens if the winner of Bedlam wins again? Oh goodness, chaos. Yeah, I mean that would be a very interesting scenario. As Stetson Bennett set to take the field one more time before halftime. A 
Let's take a look at today's hardest working player. Brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Yeah, a little bit of everything, though. It first starts with recognition. Understanding what the answer is to the question. Corner pressure, great, my receiver goes to the sideline and get the ball out of his hands. Then I can use him as an athlete. Motion out, big offensive lineman go up to the second level, and we can use him as a runner. Then field vision. See the double team to your true freshman, Bowers. I've got that stem inside release post. i got to make the right throw with touch. Can't be a driven throw. Beautiful trajectory on that football for Stetson Bennett. That's how you have such a dominant first half at the quarterback spot. And a lob one down the sideline here. Just a little too far. Miles Sims is there in coverage. I think with Stetson Bennett, like the, the example of the persistence of a dream. You know, we did this game two years ago. Remember, he comes into the game, kind of stumbles up over himself, and you know, Kirby Smart said, hey, man, like Jake Fromm is leaving. You know, you're going to have the opportunity here, and you got to understand it's going to be a big chance for you. And I think, you know, the persistence of wanting to be the starting quarterback at Georgia, believing in himself, paid off and you can tell how much the the football team believes in him in him as well it was fun talking to Todd Munkin about what this journey has been like for Stetson Bennett he said look if I was him and now I'm starting maybe I've got confidence in myself but yeah. I've spent the last 14 to 16 months being told by us as a coaching staff you're not good enough. Yeah. Right. So who would have blamed him if at some point he kind of threw his hands up and said, look, these guys don't believe in me. Mm -hmm. I have to go somewhere else. But he stuck with it, took a year, went to junior college, came back after originally being a walk on. And he throws one up for grabs here. And it's incomplete. And that will end the first half. So three touchdown passes in the opening half for Stetson Bennett to go along with 223 yards. And the dominance of Georgia over Georgia Tech continues 24 to nothing. They've got the lead at halftime. Coming up after the break, it's Kevin Agandi and Booger McFarland. They will have the Capital One halftime report. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Arby's and the ACC on ABC. Bob Wachusen, Dan Orlovsky, Chris Budd just about set for the start of the third quarter. Georgia with a 24 to nothing lead and a clean old fashioned hate rivalry game with Georgia Tech and they will start the third quarter with the football. After a three touchdown performance in the first half by Stetson Bennett and Georgia they have their antennas up they're starting the second half as if they are expecting an onside kick and lining up potentially for an onside kick and then sending it deep is Tech so that will end up in the end zone there is your touchback it'll come out to the 25 yard line and Dan Orlovsky you said it in the first half really from the start that this is a team in Georgia that gives you the same effort mm. every single play of every single game regardless of score and situation that now reflects on the scoreboard in this game as well. Yeah and I think if you're Kirby Smart you probably want them to come out and start fast in the second half as well. They did that in the first half come out in the second half do that both offensively and defensively turn this into a 35 you know point differential in the football game and then you can get some of those starters out and really start preparing for next week but you can't do that if you come out with the lackadaisical mindset so I expect them to come out with some urgency and tempo to try and really salt this game away. Two tight ends. And they'll run a little wide receiver hitch out to Pickens. George Pickens reappearing this season at this point off the torn ACL. And you can hear all the dog fans that are at Bobby Dodd Stadium reacting to seeing Pickens make it a play. Chris Button. Yeah, it gets loud in here when Pickens takes the field like we saw in the first half. But Dan spot on and what Kirby Smart told me at halftime. His concern today was playing an early game in the cold. They wanted them to start fast. He wasn't pleased with the way the first half ended with some of the three and outs. So he wants his team to really put on the gas this first part of the second half. Well, they've got second down and five. 
after the Pickens hitch and they'll swing one to the near side this time it's Lad McConkey. he gets a couple of blocks and then picks up a first down. Seen that play a couple times there on this Georgia offense just kicking that ball to the perimeter to McConkey and allowing go get six or seven yards. I do think one of the things that you'd like to see in this second half is rhythm offensively kind of like the way you started this game and yeah try to get the ball to George Pickens a couple times. I mean for them next week if he can go into that game feeling comfortable with some game reps and some touches that's huge. Motion down that receiver just in case the secondary guys there in the run game. Near White tripped up but falls forward for seven. Motion down Lad McConkey just in case there's a secondary force there in your run game and you can hand the ball off. Just making sure, you know, goal run game wise is getting your back onto a corner rather than a safety. Kind of a selfless aspect of the wide receivers in this offense. Just a good run game look for this offense. Here's James Cook with a stiff arm, looking like his big brother Dalvin. Mm. He's got another first down for Georgia. I love James Cook's balance. You know, I think watch this as he goes through this hole. Just good vision, stiff arm with the left arm, and just balance against those two arm tacklers for that Georgia Tech defense. Just a little bit of a pull of the hair there. A carpenter, but if you're going to continue to get these two high safeties from Georgia Tech's defense, this offensive line is good enough. Safety drop down now. Now you're going to get one high safety. Should be a ball to the perimeter. There's a lob to the perimeter. Incomplete, as Mitchell, the intended receiver, pushed up against the sideline by Trey Swilling. Second throw like that to Mitchell, I would just say you see a little bit of frustration from Stetson Bennett. He's six foot four. You know, like those are long foul balls, so to speak. You know, you've got to make sure you're not trying to throw a bad ball, but you've got to understand the guy that you're throwing to is six four. You've got to give him a chance to use that height to his advantage on those throws. Four man rush and it well protected flips one out of the backfield to McIntosh and he McIntosh picks up seven yards makes it third down and three and Dan Stetson Bennett to me Embody something I've heard you say about Mac Jones. I've heard you say about NFL quarterbacks that kind of had that quote unquote game manager dink and dunk element sure. to their game, which isn't a bad thing. Right. right. People think of that as like a pejorative. Right. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. Right. Like Stetson Bennett seems to really understand this offense and why he's probably held off JT Daniels as the starter, blends in with how they want to from a complimentary standpoint Absolutely. play their game. Absolutely. Know thyself as a player, know thyself as a team. Right. The blitz picked up. He's going to take a shot on third down. Incomplete. Flag out. He went deep for Mitchell. Tobias Oliver was there in coverage. And this will go against Oliver, it appears. Pass interference. Defense number eight. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Trying to take a shot to Mitchell downfield again. Is it Oliver grabbing that right arm? Oh. Certainly didn't look like it. Unless that official sees that that right arm is getting tugged by Oliver. We don't have necessarily the look of it. But go back to Stetson Bennett. You know, I think the, the best way to put it, Bob, is I think he's on the field for the things he doesn't do more than for the things he does do, right? He's He doesn't hurt our football team. He doesn't play careless with the football. A toss to McIntosh. He gets outside. He's got about eight more. Well, that was, again, something Todd Munkin said when we were talking to him yesterday. Right. Get an interesting way of putting that. He said, you want a quarterback to go out there and make plays. Sure. You want him to push the ball down the field at times. There are risks that are worth taking. Right. 
But he said sometimes the fastest way to get yanked uh -huh. is if you hurt us by taking an unnecessary chance. Well, so forget, it's that decision making. Head coach is a defensive guy. He's cut from the Nick Saban cloth. We're going to be a good physical football team. We're going to play great defense, special teams, and we are not going to give games away. That's part of the identity of knowing we are. And when you run it like this, quarterback doesn't have to do too much as James Cook is down to the nine yard line. It's first and goal. Now watch the pullers. You're going, to, you're going to pull Schaefer and you're going to pull your tight end Bowers from the left side of the offensive line. Out, out. Cook with the vision. That ball hits basically right down the middle of that offensive line. That means the right side caves down the defense and then Bowers comes and Schaefer come kick out and that's Cook just understanding the design of the play is meant to hit downhill. That Bowers up top one on one if you want it. He'll go there. Bowers climbs the ladder. He's got another touchdown. That is a true freshman tight end who can be a matchup nightmare. Watch the body control. Win at the line of scrimmage. Get your head back. Now body control. Gosh, that's good. And the peak down to get the right foot in. I can't, th there's like seven things on that play that are so good. The win, look, watch him with peaks. Come on now. True freshman doing that, the awareness, the body control. What a special player. Win at the line of scrimmage, find the football, go up and catch it, and then understand where you are on the field, peek down, make sure you get your foot in bounds. Second touchdown reception of the game for Brock Bowers. Puts him at an even 100 yards receiving. He's a Mackey semifinalist. He just keeps on setting records for a tight end at Georgia as a freshman. Time for our athletic ah, trivia question. Georgia's defense is allowing 7.6 points per game this season. Third fewest of any FBS team in the last 40 seasons. All right, what team is number one that allowed the fewest points per game in that spin. So the best defense the last 40 years. Who is it? Eric McGowan deep to receive the kick. This will sail into the end zone about five yards deep. You have a guess? 2002 Miami Hurricanes. Good guess. The answer to our Aflac trivia question. He was points allowed by a defense last 40 years Oklahoma back in 1986 the Boz had a defense that allowed less than a touchdown per game uh, I think George's <laughs> is more impressive because the era of football no offense Boz well, that points per game average getting lower and lower with each game that Georgia plays as they are shutting out Georgia Tech Past the midway point of this game. Jordan Yates sprints out incomplete. Kobe Dean puts pressure on the quarterback again. Like I feel like this plays a perfect example of Georgia's defense. Who do you want him to throw the ball to? And Kobe Dean stays outside. Nobody is open. I mean, you're you're talking about the positioning, the proper leverage of guys. The corner stays outside, then the flat defender stays outside, then you trail underneath, and the Kobe Dean stays out on the perimeter. Like, there's nobody for quarterbacks to throw the football to, and you could be as talented as you want, but when this defense plays as connected and as in the proper leverage and position as they do, it's impossible. Jordan Mason with a cutback. He's out across the 30 to the 31 for a gain of six. Quay Walker on the tackle. I mean, imagine going a whole season and allowing less than a field goal to your opponents in the first halves of games. Games are over. I mean, even some of the games that they allow some points in the second half, right? I mean, there might be just a natural let up at times yeah. to give up a touchdown here or there in a game that's lopsided. Third down and four. And Georgia Tech continues to play without Jameer Gibbs. That's weird. That's he has not been on the field. 
since the start. There's a shot down the sideline, and it is good to Dylan Leonard. Excellent throw from Jordan Yates. Hung in the pocket, took a hit, and delivered a strike to his tight end for 40 yards. Yeah, you're talking about a quarterback hanging in the pocket. See the coverage. You got your tight end on Walker. It's a little bit of double move. That's a great throw by Jordan Yates to find Leonard. Really inside slot. Hang, hang, hang. Take that shot and deliver the ball. Peek to the Jumbotron. That's a nice play by Jordan Yates. He had 17 yards passing for the game. Take your shot, Georgia Tech. Take your shot now. Like, come on, don't, don't give me this run, run throw. Take a shot. 40 yards on that play alone. Little zone read right up the middle. That was Jordan Mason. He's got three. Kobe Dean made the tackle. And the Kobe Dean is a guy that you said Made you think of Patrick Willis. As yeah, a, remember Ole Miss? That's pretty yeah. good. Ole Miss linebacker, just as a player, incredibly smart, got great instincts, build, power through. I mean, it, if people could see Kirby Smart right now on the sideline, you would think he is in the SEC champion. Look at him. Just he is going with pure emotion and effort right now. He wants the, the shutout just as much as anybody. And he is, I think that's why this team plays this way. Look at him, look at him, look at the yelling, the communication. I mean, you're talking about a coach that coaches through a play, not to a play. Looks like a timeout will be called by Georgia Tech from their sideline with the play clock winding down. Georgia Tech takes its first time out of the half. <laughs> so midway through the third quarter, Georgia Tech trying to get on the board. Time now for our All-State Playoff Predictor as we take a look at Bedlam and what its impact might be on the college football playoff. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma later on tonight. Now if these two teams, the winner of this game wins out, here is what we are predicting are their chances to make the college football playoff. Our predictor thinks if Oklahoma State wins a couple of times, it's better than 50-50 that they would get in. For more information about each team's chances, check out ESPN.com slash Allstate Playoff Predictor. As Jordan Mason is bottled up near the line of scrimmage, loses a couple of yards. What do you think, Dan? You think there's a chance that if Oklahoma State wins well, that game later on tonight, Cincinnati is looking at them in their rearview mirror? Yeah, I think you're, you're nervous of it, mainly if Michigan beats Ohio State, right? If Michigan beats Ohio State, because then there's the chance that Michigan loses Knocks Ohio State out, loses to Wisconsin. I think a little bit depends on how well they play against the Oklahoma, but I think Cincinnati's got to be paying attention because if they beat Oklahoma and then again beat either Oklahoma or Baylor or somebody in the Big 12 championship, those are two big time wins. Third down and 10. Empty backfield. Screen caught. Jordan Mason, nowhere to go. Look at all those red helmets rally to the football, right? They get into that camera club pretty fast as Mason ends up going down with Lewis seen there first, but he had about a half dozen of his teammates on the scene pretty quickly after that. Yeah, running to the ball. Now, it's not what I wanted out of this Jordan Tech possession, though. You get that huge play, and then you go run, run, perimeter screen, and now you're setting yourself up for this fourth and eight, fourth and nine situation. And Georgia Tech down 31 to nothing. From here, you're looking at about a 45, 46 yard field goal. Yeah. So they figure, why not just go for it? Again, Brent Samaglia, their normal place kicker, Watch this is clock. injured. They hustle up to the line with four. Now down to two to get the snap off. And it'll be a false start. False start. Offense, number 70. High drive penalty. Down. See, like, and I'm not trying to pile on, but that just feels like a lack of a plan. You know, like if you should, on second down, if we don't get anything, what are we going to go to on third down? And then if third down, if we don't get anything, what are we going to on fourth down? And it shouldn't feel like this hurry type of environment. And Chris Button, it's loud down there because of all these Georgia fans. Yeah, I was about to say the sound of it, it feels like a home game for Georgia. The fans are chanting UGA. Georgia fans and they are all on their feet. And they need to 
Russell again. Three on the play clock. Down to two. Down to one. They get the fourth down snap off. Yates under pressure with a pump fake. Heaves one down the sideline incomplete. And it will be a takeaway on downs for Georgia's defense as they keep on drawing closer to yet another shutout. Channing Tyndall chase down Yates. What a job by this defense. Watch 41 Tyndall hunt. Hunt playing proper leverage. Yates is going to get frustrated. No one to get the ball to. Georgia Bulldogs, big stop. Tomorrow, we'll have the ESPN Events Invitational Consolation Game between number four Kansas and Iona. One Eastern on ESPN and the app. One app, one tap. The championship game between Dayton and Belmont is on ESPN 2 at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's a lot of fun listening to Dick Vitale losing yeah, awesome. his mind as Dayton got a buzzer beater against Kansas. As James Cook gets tied up near the line of scrimmage. Chris Button. Yeah, Nolan Smith talked to the media this week for after all the questions about Stetson Bennett. He felt the need to defend his quarterback. Well, y'all, y'all always, I want to say something about my my quarterback now, Stetson Bennett, the mailman, y'all call him a weak, weak point. I read all the stuff on media. I know I'm not supposed to, but one thing about Stetson, he just works. He don't listen to nobody. He just works. He a blue collar guy. And <clears throat> when you talk about trusting the guy, I, I, I trust him because he go out there and work and, and put his best foot forward every day, even though it may not look pretty to y'all. Hand one to Zamir White here, and there goes Zeus White, close to a first down. And Stetson Bennett, he has earned that trust. He's a guy that starts as a walk-on, mm -hmm. takes a year after being redshirted, goes to junior college, then comes back again yep. to Georgia as a scholarship quarterback. But as the backup, yes. needed a JT Daniels injury to get his opportunity, and he has persevered. Well, he averages 10 yards an attempt this season. He's fifth in college football when it comes to efficiency and he's shown up in big games. That's how you get the respect of your football team. Toss to Kenny McIntosh. He's got a convoy down the sideline. Kenny McIntosh with a stiff arm to the pylon. Touchdown. Little kick toss, four strong, good blocks on the perimeter. Let's see if he stays in bounds down to sideline. McIntosh goes as he stay. Oh yeah, clearly stays in. Some home run speed. About big number zero, Darnell Washington at tight end, looking like a left tackle wiping out two defenders. Thirty-eight to nothing. And this is the exclamation point that you would love to have if you're the number one team in America heading towards the SEC title game. Watch the scissors block by this bunch, okay? There's Washington. He starts inside. He's going to go out. There's Bowers outside. He's going to go in. There's this scissors block on this toss. Washington's job, kick out. Bowers, help, help. Now go find action inside. Then you can bring inside offensive lineman downfield Jones. But that cross blocking, that scissors blocking by those tight ends springs McIntosh for that big hit. Now watch Bowers. See that just that final block is such a good piece to that toss play. And then the ability to stiff arm home run speed by six. Can't say enough of the job about this offensive line group, but also that true freshman tight end. Bowers, the sophomore Washington has both pass catching options and blocking pieces. You know, this Georgia offense has a huge NFL feel to me. It really does, because the NFL, you know, you're the, the, the teams in the NFL right now that are good, they got good two tight end groupings and they can run the football. That, that's the NFL right now. And with Washington and Bowers, sophomore and freshman, they got bright futures here. And if they get into a really tough NFL style game with an Alabama yep. in the playoff, yep. and they're comfortable playing whatever tempo, whatever yeah. personnel grouping, like they can play the game like an NFL team can play a close game as we check in with Kevin.
that, that, like, that's the style that I would play. If Booger was playing D-tackle, I would just tell my guys, we're going to play bully ball against Booger. <laughs> he'll, he'll cave, he'll fold. Here's Dante Smith. And Dan, you talk about the balance. They've got multiple tight end groupings, plenty of receivers to throw the ball to, but they also have a three-headed monster at running back when you add Kenny McIntosh in with White and Cook. Yeah, I mean, McIntosh, obviously that home run he just hit. Again, Cook is a third down back, a guy that's really good in their pass game, also great balance. And then Zeus White, just a physical kind of bruising type of back, 4-6 average, 5-7 average. So, you know, I love giving love to the backs because they're all different in their different kind of unique ways. Also, those big fellas up front are just so good. You know, I, we talked about that offensive line this week, and just I, I was so impressed with the feet and the hands of that group. And with those two backs back there, man, this is a really good run unit. Dante Smith breaks a tackle and gets dragged down. At the 43 yard line of Georgia Tech after a game of 14. Next Sunday, we will have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups for the Cotton Bowl and the Orange Bowl to be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Reese and the guys will also unveil the New Year's Six games and have the final top 25 ranking in a four hour special. It all starts at noon Eastern after Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN and the ESPN app. One app. One tap. So first and ten for Georgia Tech at their own 43-yard line, just trying to get on the board against the best defense in college football. Here's Jemias Griffin oh, and tackle. pursuit to the sideline. He picks up a yard. Now, Chris Button, the ratings for our show next Sunday afternoon might not be that great in Athens. Yeah, uh, there's a rule over in Athens. If you are part of the Georgia football team, you are not allowed to watch the selection show, at least the ones that come on on Thursday during the week, because in their eyes, it doesn't matter. They know where they stand. In fact, I talked to Nolan Smith this week. He called me during the selection show. I said, are you, what are, what are you doing? Are you not watching? Like, your team's about to be unveiled. And he, I don't know what you're sure you're talking about. What show's on? Kind of joking with me that, you know, it's in their rearview mirror, that if they continue to do what they do and beat teams, they know what's ahead of them. The show, the rankings, doesn't really matter to them. Here's Griffin. If they get a win next week in the SEC championship game and I'm Kirby, let them watch the show. Right? I mean, the hay's in the barn, right? Like, I mean, it's time to find out who you're playing in the college football playoff. And uh, I, I think it would be safe. I think you're, you know, the season's in your rearview mirror. At I, well, first of all, Georgia is in the playoff. They're in a lock. They've been a lock for weeks now. They are in, no matter what happens next week. Candidly, I think down here in this area of the country, in the Southeast, the SEC championship carries a lot of stinking weight. I know a national championship is amazing, but so is an SEC championship. Um, I don't think they care who they play, Bob. I honestly don't. I think they, they want to play anybody and everybody and physically harm anyone who's on their schedule. Dante Smith has a first down. Right in front of that Georgia bench. That might not make Kirby Smart too happy, but look, if I'm a Georgia fan, if I'm a member of that program, winning next week, first of all, to beat Alabama and win the SEC championship is a big deal. Totally. You're winning the title, there's no doubt. But the other thing, the byproduct of beating Alabama, if you can knock Alabama out of the playoff, and now that's not an opponent you have to come back and try and beat again right. at some point, potentially, to win the whole thing, I think that's a big advantage as well. And also, it likely means that you're knocking them out in Cincinnati's the four seed. You'd rather play Cincinnati in the semis than that you feel better about getting into the finals. There is no question about it. 38 to nothing as Georgia is putting on a show. We have seen a true freshman tight end in Brock Bowers add to his record-setting season. With Georgia leading Georgia Tech 38 to nothing. We start the fourth quarter and we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Well, I might be able to take a nap at this point as we start the fourth with a Dante Smith run. Bottled up after a gain of a yard. Great Admiral Note game right behind of scrimmage. <laughs> Is that you? That was pretty good. That's okay. 
That is me, yes. That is me making a dog bark. <laughs> Come to that. I think for Georgia Tech, it's, you know, now you're going into another off-season of questions, right? You know, what what is the future? How do, how do they get it turned around? When does the young talent pay dividends? And there's a lot of questions coming off of this 2021 season. Eights goes down. A low snap that threw the timing of that play off from the very start. Jamon Dumas Johnson comes through to get the sack and true pressure. Dumas Johnson coming right off the edge. This is really good reaction by him. You're going to see Yates just bobble the snap just a little bit. Runs through the back and then makes sure that he holds on to Yates. Just another talented freshman out of Maryland that's going to be a big, big player on this defense. Right through that running back on. Jordan Mason on third down and long. Picks up a chunk. But it's going to be fourth down and nine as he gets inside the 40 to the 39 yard line for a gain of 14. It looks like Georgia Tech, why not? We'll go for it once again on fourth down and nine. Last time you're in this situation, Georgia just played with such good leverage. If I was Georgia Tech, I would try to send somebody down the middle of the field. You're, they're playing really outside in as a secondary. Jordan Yates, see if you can run around and make a play. But I'm sending someone down the middle of the field, seeing if I can take my shot between the hashes. Rolling the snap back again. There's the blitz off the edge. And Yates has absolutely no chance with Robert Beal, a straight line to the quarterback. Seems like someone's surprised. Watch the left edge of this offensive line. Snap comes. It's timed perfectly by the edge. Jordan Yates has no chance for success. Coming up at 345 Eastern, the 103rd battle for the Commonwealth Cup, Virginia Tech, Virginia. And the day capped off by Kenny Pickett, number 17, Pitt, squaring off against Syracuse, all on the ACC network. Don't have ACCN? Go to getaccn.com for instant access. Bob Wachusen, Dan Orlovsky, Chris Button, and JT Daniels now takes over at quarterback, getting a chance to play here for Georgia. He will hand one off Dejon Edwards, who goes up the middle for about five. Chris Button. Uh, big number 99, Jordan Davis for Georgia. Before the game today, making Christmas wishes come true. He found this little boy, Michael, in the stands with a sign. All I want for Christmas is to meet Jordan Davis. So he did. They got to chat. Michael, seven years old. Jordan's his favorite team person on Georgia because he wears number 99. He plays defensive line for a seven-year-old football team. Sweet little moment between the two. That's, that's, awesome. big, that's big guy love right yeah. there. That's awesome. What a moment <laughs> for that young man. That's awesome. That's right. Great job capturing that. That's something he'll remember for the rest of his life. His favorite player coming over and giving him attention. I always say, man, it takes 10 seconds out of your day. And the impact that that's going to have on that young kid is going to be tremendous. Dejon Edwards gets into the act. Cutting his way all the way down to the 23-yard line for a gain of 23. And it looks like we have an injured Yellow Jacket back near midfield. So we'll step aside. An injury timeout with Georgia looking to add to their lead in the fourth. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the meats. And in part by Duluth Trading Company. Clothing and gear designed and tested to do. During the last year, Georgia kicked off an initiative called Dogs for Pups to assist the pandemic-affected community. These activities included supplying students with Wi-Fi hotspots to help with virtual education. A coat drive for local area children, 13 reading clinics, 
a physical education class as well. Just the dog's way of being involved, trying to help out the folks in Athens as we all continue to try and get through the COVID pandemic. After the injury time, out it was Jordan Dominic that went down, so he had to be helped off to the sideline. Here's Edwards on a toss. This time he's got nowhere to go. Might have lost a yard. And JT Daniels, of course, who came over from USC. Last year was medically cleared after the torn ACL prior to the opener, but his up and down injury roller coaster opened the door for Stetson Bennett. And Bennett is now going to be Dan 9 and 0 on the starter this season as the former walk on, but he fits this team very well. Yeah. You know, JT Daniels, such a talented player. I think Stetson Bennett is the quarterback for this team that gives them the best chance to win. Flag down on the run by Edwards. So we'll have to check the marker. Although what a security blanket if you're Kirby Smart if yeah. something were to happen to Stetson Bennett. Sure. How many teams in college football have a more talented backup quarterback than a JT Daniels? Yeah. Personal yeah. foul, face mask, defense number 43. Foul the added to the end of the run, half the distance to the goal, first down. There's that face mask rip right there from this yellow jacket defense. You know, not only a guy that's talented, Bob, but also he's played. You know, this sure. started as a true freshman at USC, comes from the decorated Matter Day High School legend of Carson Palmer and Matt Liner. Is that right? Um, so a guy that's talented, but also very well experienced. Dejon Edwards again breaks a tackle in the backfield and dives inside the five. Wes Jackson had a chance to bring him down and could not. So again, JT Daniels, who was an ESPN 300 player and as a true freshman, other than he and Matt Barkley, no one else has ever started at USC as a true freshman at quarterback, but the season ending knee injury in the season opener in 2019 led to the transfer to Georgia. Everybody thought he would come to Athens and become the de facto starting quarterback there as well. And was at the start, but a lat injury to begin the season and a re-aggravation of that injury led to Bennett capitalizing. And another touchdown on the cutback by Edwards as the dogs add to their lead. The same bunch formation out of this Georgia offense, you know, where they get that outside tight end. He's going to come down and block the inside guy, wraps around. You can pull your offensive lineman. Really good vision by Edwards as well, kind of seeing that back line cut. Big physical tight end grouping out on the perimeter, making blocks. Again, I think that's just something different about this Georgia football team is when they put those three tight ends on the field, Washington, Bowers, see they're like, it's a good run grouping and they can throw the ball plenty out of it. A dominant performance. By the Bulldogs, 45 to nothing. We have a Saturday triple header on ABC, continuing with the 116th annual Bedlam game. Number 10, Oklahoma. Number 7, Oklahoma State at 7.30 Eastern here on ABC and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. And as you saw with our playoff predictor earlier, Oklahoma State wins that game. They're better than 50-50 that they would be one yeah. win away from possibly crashing the party and making the college football playoff. So a lot on the line in Bedlam later on tonight. Barrett Zirkel with a kick. Kyrick McGowan watches his sail. They come out to the 25-yard line. And but Georgia has a special one, Dan, as a true freshman at tight end. Yeah, a ton of impact. You know, you look at the high red zone, 
He's going to acquire attention. He's going to get double teamed. That allows Burton one-on-one. -on -one. Inside release, stem post. It's a great throw from Stetson Bennett, but that's the attention from Bowers. Shallow cross on the inside. Now, Bowers has got to do a good job of outside releasing, stepping on the toes of defenders, and crossing face. But this was the most impressive play of the day for me, the ability to run away from people. Then down in the tight red zone, one-on-one, -on -one, fade, reach back, body control, peek down to get the foot in. Just a dominant performance by the true freshman. Been very impressed with him on tape, and I think he's going to have a huge impact next week in the SEC title game and into the college football playoff. There's the trick play you've been waiting for. Hey. Nate McCollum on the jet sweep toss. Gets about nine. We haven't seen a lot of the misdirection that you would think in the bag of tricks Georgia Tech would have to go to to stay competitive in this game. And the ship sailed, obviously, in the first half. I, I don't want to pretend like it's easy against this defense, right? We've shown the statistics of how incredible this defense is. But for a three-win football team, I, that's why in my key to the game, it was like, empty the bag. Any trick play that you've had that you have held on to this season, you should have called all of them. And I'm just a little bit confused. It's not telling your team you're not good enough. It's saying, hey, let's let's try and catch this defense a little bit and help you guys play well. Dante Smith thrown back. <laughs> Lewis Johnson is their first for Georgia. Well, up until the last two weeks, this Georgia Tech team has been competitive. And this is going to be their sixth consecutive loss. Last week to Notre Dame, 55 to nothing. Yeah. Today to Georgia, 45 to nothing. But before that, Virginia, Virginia Tech at Miami, Boston College, four straight losses. Bunch of one by, scores. By an right? average yeah. of, you know, just over a touchdown. Yeah. I think the two big questions for Georgia Tech in the future are: Can they keep their quarterback, Jeff Sims, and can they keep their tailback? Jameer gets. Jordan Mason does get them a third down conversion here and a fresh set of downs. You know, can they keep those kids out of the portal? That's just the truth and the reality of college football nowadays. If you only have a couple of years of eligibility left and you feel like you've got a chance to go to a program that's going to give you a better chance to win, yeah. now there is a way to do that yeah. without having to sit for a year. Yeah. And that's the biggest two questions that they've got to try to figure out is how can they, you know, they sold those young kids on the rebuild and they knew it was going to be tough. How do they kind of sell them again, give us one more year because they believe they're close to really turning it around. Flag down on the run by Jordan Mason. Mason the ball carrier. Flag on the play. Holding, offense, number 54. It's a 10 yard penalty, first down. Yeah. And I, I think for Georgia now, you know, the question, obviously, everything gets spun to next week. Sure. And the question that I guess everybody have asked, or most people have asked all, all season is, can can they and how do they beat Alabama? You know, I, I think they beat Alabama, number one, those receivers for Alabama are so special. So I think the coverage leverage has got to be a big thing. Now, that's a Georgia defensive strength. Um, I think they got to trust their defensive front versus Alabama's run game. You know, again, commit to coverage, play with those two safeties over the top. Um, but I think they got to they got to keep Jamison Williams in front of them. Number one, he is an absolute electric receiver. And if he gets behind you, it's over. So they got to do a good job of keeping Jamison in front. Um, I think Georgia got to use a little bit of their spread run game, you know, spread them out, put those tight ends on the field, play spread out football and run it. I, I think in their pass game, it's picks, it's rubs, it's meshes. Um, and I'd say the big thing, defensively is they cannot allow Bryce Young to be creative. That you gotta go hunt Bryce Young, because you if you allow him to hang out in the back of the pocket, he is such a special creative athlete. Jitterbug run for Dante Smith. And he picks up about four. Well, the thing you said that you noticed on tape very much from this Georgia defense is at times how effective that they can be. 
when being vanilla. Yeah. Right. So just to keep these guys in front of yep. you. Yep. But let your front six well, yeah. kind of go be a front six and then have five back in coverage and just make sure the ball doesn't go over your head because this group can put it over your head. And I think it's situational. When you look at Robinson, the running back, again, that's where you say your front four, your front six guys, they slow him down because that allows Jamison Williams and Mechie for them to stay in front of you and minimize that pass game. Now, third downs, that's when I do think they have to get aggressive because Bryce Young doesn't have 40 total touchdowns just because he's an okay player. Like, when you get into those situations, you cannot allow Bryce Young to hang back in the pocket in a four-man rush and just hold the football because it's almost like watching Aaron Rodgers a little bit where he waits for you to commit as a defense and then he uses his legs to create a throw. You know, that's why when I say you gotta go hunt him, you gotta force the ball to come out of his hands. Now your coverage unit's gotta be spectacular in those situations, but if Dan Landing and Kirby Smart just allow Bryce Young to hit back in the pocket, man, I, I think you're asking too much out of your defense. Can you get after Young without sending numbers after him? I mean, is that the biggest schematic yeah, challenge or decision you have to make as a defense? Yeah, I think Alabama's offensive line is not what it has been in the past, so yes. Um, but there's going to be moments when you're going to have to dial up that pressure and you can't just say, okay, we're just going to run, rush forward and, and be that vanilla. 422, all that stands between Georgia and that SEC title game. Now let's look, look, look at Stetson Bennett throwing people open this afternoon. He's got a crosser to Rosamie Jack Saint. Beautiful job of using his eyes, see the flat defender, and throwing this ball out to space, leading him into that window. And then he's going to have a little play action fake to Washington. Watch how quickly it is. Put the right foot in the ground. Now throw the ball up high to that big six foot seven frame. Done a really nice job in the play action game this afternoon of utilizing that run game. Ball shown to the defense, getting up and making really good throws, throwing guys open against defenders. Carson Beck becomes the third quarterback in the game today. For the dogs. Savon Clark goes up the middle. As another running back gets into the act as well. Coming up on four minutes to go. Picked up six on first down. And Carson Beck. Redshirt freshman. Who has obviously played sparingly, but it's a Georgia defense that normally when we get to this part of the game, you can bring the backup quarterback in. Let him get a few snaps. Yeah, but, but do you, I think that George is becoming a little bit of an appealing quarterback place as well with their offensive coordinator, Todd Monken, and his ties of the Big 12, his ties in the NFL. You know, quarterbacks aren't just thinking, hey, this is a defensive-minded school. Matthew Stafford came here. I know that friend of mine, Dominic Rayola, longtime center in the NFL, has got a young son, Dylan Rayola, who's a sophomore in Texas. He will be the number one recruit in America in two years. He's a big fan of Georgia and their program as well, so I think you know, their offense has become appealing to quarterback recruits as well. on first down grinds out about three yards how about the day for the Georgia defense now they've been as advertised just people run into the football I call it population to the ball six seven guys second play of the game getting in on that tackle they've done a fantastic job with their defensive lineman movement creating angles in that run game to win swims over the top shutting down any attempt of at this Georgia Tech run game the sacks the pressure by the front four has been so impressive. You, I mean, everything on tape was you know, jaw dropping and then you see him play in person, you're like, my goodness, doing something that hasn't been done in 40 plus years. Yeah, they are relentless. They're going to end the regular season with Clark running again here and getting to midfield, having only trailed in a 12 game regular season for a total of about 20 minutes of game time. Right. There've only been three games good? this season where the opponent has ever even had a lead. And Tennessee's the only team that led twice against them. And the games where at some point they gave up 
a brief lead to the opponent. They ended up blowing them out. So you spend the season basically for all the 20 minutes of game time ahead on the scoreboard. I would have to think that's a fun yeah. team to play quarterback for. And, and the crazy thing, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, they, they don't have that, you know, they got three kids that are going to get drafted in the top ten of the NFL draft either. I mean, they got Jordan Davis is a first rounder, and Nicobe Dean's probably a first rounder. And Kendrick's maybe a first, second, or third rounder. But they got a lot of guys that are going to play in the NFL for a long time. But this is about just everybody doing their job at such an incredibly high level. Well, no Georgia team has ever gone 12-0 in the regular season now that they've stretched the regular season out. So this will be a program first. Number one in the AP poll for the seventh consecutive week. That's a school record. Also equals Alabama's streak in 2018 is the longest since the poll was created. They will extend that record as they will be number one in the AP poll, number one in the college football playoff rankings. And they will polish off an undefeated 12-0 season as they also finish out the largest shutout in the history of this rivalry 45 to nothing an emphatic way for Kirby Smart and the dogs to end their season and head now towards the postseason it's all out in front of Georgia and they bring us back to the days of Herschel and coach Dooley and win a national championship very possible. A very good football team. Doesn't have many flaws. Let's head down to Chris. Coach, 45 nothing shutout. What are you most pleased with your team today? I was pleased we started fast. That was important. 12 o'clock game. Don't come out here and wallow around. We need to start fast. I thought they did that. Defensively, another shutout for you guys. A lot of these players on that defense decided to come back from another year. What has made them go from a great defense to an elite defense? Accountability. There were times today we were not elite, so I want to be careful about that word. They did play hard early, um, but we got a lot more left ahead of us and we got to keep getting better and keep ascending and uh, I'm proud of the effort that the entire team gave but we got to do a much better job on special teams and run game if we're going to be able to get the lead. You mentioned effort. You guys will 12 and 0. You go to Atlanta next week for the SEC championship. How have you gotten this team to play with effort every play every week? Well, that's the standard. They hold each other accountable for that. So I've been proud of the way the leaders have led. And when they do it themselves, everybody follows. Appreciate it, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Go dog. Well, Kirby Smart may not think his effort was elite today. They may want to check with the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets for their opinion. 45 to nothing. Georgia wins it going away. And the postseason on deck. Next on ABC, College Football Scoreboard. Kevin Nagandi and Booger McFarland will take you through the day's news and highlights. For Dan Orlovsky and Chris Budden, I'm Bob Wachusen. So long from Atlanta.